What's up dudes and dudettes, my name is Swamp Water. Friday Night Funking features many different songs separated into weeks, with one week having three each, except for week two. And today we will be ranking said songs from worst to best, and then we will add up each song's worth to see which week is the best of them all. And because why not, I'll also include the witty mod. Cause despite me not understanding the obsession many have with this humanoid bomb, his song selection is well worthy to make Witty counted as an official week of the game. Oh, also my channel is small as said in my last video, and I would be very grateful if you hit that big red subscribe button and hit a like on the video. I do many types of videos so you'll probably find something you'd like. But anyways, let's start the vid. First category we will be looking at is the trash category. Crappy songs, that's pretty much it. All these songs, uh, I'd rather they weren't in the game, let's just say that. And at the bottom of the list we have Eggnog. I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't really engage interest or make me want to bop my head to the beat. Also, I don't know if this is just me, but Christmas-like music just sounds odd listening to outside the Christmas season. One last thing about the song is it's very forgettable. I listened to the song on loop while ranking these songs, and I can never remember how the song went. That's how forgettable it was. Oh well, at least it only gets better from here. Number 23, Coca. Yeah, another week 5 song. <laughs> Something tells me this week isn't going to be graded too high. The thing that makes the song slightly better than the last one is that it was noticeably less forgettable and featured a more notable beat. Number 22, Overhead. The one witty song I really don't like. I don't know, it just doesn't have the connection that the first witty song has, and it doesn't have the intense track that the third witty song has. It just ends up being a pretty underwhelming track, to be honest. Number 21, Winter Horland. Wow, this song's creepy. But creepy isn't the reason why it's so low. I just don't find it fitting with the other songs, which I realize is the point. It's unfitting to be unsettling and bizarre, but it doesn't change the overall replayability of most of the other tracks. Now we're in the decent category. All of these songs are pretty fun and are well worth listening to. Number 20, High. At the bottom of the decent category is High. It's pretty catchy and almost in a way common. Much like one of those lo-fi beat radios you hear on YouTube. All the voices are soft like a whisper, and it is a nice change of pace from the other songs. Number 19, Stress. Stress isn't that stressful. It feels like uh, which is a song we'll be seeing later on, but all the notes seem randomized. I know that's not what the song actually is, but it definitely feels like a flop in the rhythm and funk. Number 18, Senpai. This one's gonna be controversial due to the fact it isn't higher on the list. One thing I will give the song is it's very calming while somehow being engaging and energetic. Oh, another thing is the beat is engraved into my brain, with the one thing bringing it down being that there are so many better songs of Friday Night Funkin' that this really good track is way lower compared to the others, including even in this week. I just feel like these other songs that we'll be seeing in a bit are better. <laughs> Number 17, Satan Panties. The demons in the background accurately express my reaction to this song. It's catchy and really gives a sway feel. Not much else to say, it's just a really decent song. Number 16, Thorns. The plot twist of week 6, showing Senpai's secret dark side with his tragic backstory of being trapped in the screen due to his girlfriend's twisted dad. What a great conclusion to the week. To sum it up, it's the less intense ballistic, which we'll be talking about very soon. Number 15, Blammed. The best part about the song is probably the ominous screech-like sound. It makes you really feel like you shouldn't be here, and that you stepped in the wrong woods. This included with Pico's occasional harsh sounds during the more intense parts gives a really good dread feel to it. Number 14, Tutorial. Okay, okay, okay. I know it's really silly to rank the tutorial so high, but honestly it does a really good job teaching you how to play the game while not bogging down the quality of Friday Night Funkin' tracks. It's worthy to be higher than the prior songs due to this. 
Oh, also, it's really amusing to me with the troll at the end of the song if you play it on a harder difficulty by giving you a spam of notes to press. Whenever someone sees that segment, they are bound to have at least a chuckle. You're so good. <laughs> Number 13, MILF. Now for the best song of week four, MILF. Such a headbanger, with that one segment that is just way too tough compared to the rest of the song. Its reputation of being a strong song is well deserved. Every instrument just works. There's no part of the song that feels dumb or unnecessary. It just kind of goes well. And that tops off the decent category. Now we will be looking at the great songs, stuff that without the game would just not be the same. Number 12, Guns. The Guns song has heavy thumps in the background, making each note feel like a strong punch. Meanwhile, the background sounds like music you'd hear in an old Flash animation, which really fits the fact that Tank Man is from Newgrounds past. Number 11, Philly. Okay, I don't know if this was intentional, but the background vocals really sounds like the Russian Cow song. If you don't hear it, listen to the remix by Siva Gunner, and you'll never hear this song the same again. Anyways, this song is really great overall, and it's playful, especially when the music goes calm slash smooth, and it just makes you wish that you were there. Good song. Good job, Pico. <laughs> that line's cheesy. Number 10, Bo P. Bo. A great first song to the game. Without the song, I feel like people wouldn't have continued, because it's simple to play and gives off the feel that you are getting off your training wheels and are on your way to demolish all of Girlfriend's father's opponents. The song also seems like he's going easy on you, as if he expects you to fail, which amplifies more and more the longer he is with Girlfriend. What an excellent beginner. Number 9, Pico. This song is mostly great because even though there aren't really lyrics, it feels like there is. This makes it entertaining to create your own lyrics, which many people have done in the past. But what about the song itself? The song is memorable and it follows other Pico songs by having that intimidating back instruments and has harsh nasal sounds from Pico himself. Number 8, Ugh. Week 7 was mostly an eh week, apart from the well-made animation. However, this song actually makes me bop in my chair. This song adds the same feeling that Pico songs did. A sense of unbelonging and danger, mostly with harshness and intensity. However, this track adds humor with the us to the song. That makes it a lot more goofy than serious. Number 7, Dad Battle. This song is catchy, it has a kick to it. The back and forth works best in this song, and it greatly feels like you're trying to replicate it compared to the other songs in this game. This isn't just playing to the song, this is a battle of replication. Plus, it's easy to play, so it's easy to enjoy the music, whereas other stages you might be too focused on trying not to get blue balled. Number 6, Ballistic. Whoa, who would have known that a fan-made mod had a song in the top 6? This song is what Thorns could have been, chaotic and intense. Of course, people know this as the really hard song that demolishes anyone who plays it, but I just really love how Witty is pissed beyond belief. He wants you to leave, and you have pestered him to his boiling point, which his aggression is appropriate seeing as he is a literal bomb. This song reminds me of Your Worst Nightmare from Undertale. It's just absolute chaos, and shows no sign of hope. Which here's a little known fact about me. I love chaos. I mean, that's why I really enjoy Mario Kart Wii, the entry in the series where power-ups are most punishing. I almost want to keep talking about the song for another hour, but we gotta move on. What a great song, though. And now we are in the top five songs. These songs could easily be amazing to listen to on a playlist. If I could make out with music, I'd make out with these next five songs. Please don't take that out of context. Number five, Spookies. We have spent so long talking about music and we finally get to week two. It's a shame that there's only two songs because 
both are top five beauties. It's dramatic, but yet silly. Almost like everything is very sinister, but nobody is taking it seriously. The song really feels straight out of the payload animations where they originated from. Plus, the song is just funky. And, and because of what I just said, the title of the game really shines in this song. Number 4. Fresh. Yes, the song from FNF that has been memed to death. But for good reason! It's groovy, funk shines once more here, and the background is so calming and makes you feel like you just tuned into the radio while they were playing a song you like. It's hard to describe what makes all the pieces of the song fit together. But one of the easiest things to point out is the song feels the most rap-like out of the entire selection of songs in this game. The beatbox adds so much to the song. For some reason, it also seems like they are taking jabs at each other, despite there being no lyrics. <laughs> what a groove the song is. 12 out of 10. Number 3. Penis. Number 3. Low Fight. A fan-made mod made it to top 3, and for good reason! The fact that Boyfriend initializes the combat is a fresh twist. Witty just seems so chill about what's going on, and really feels like he unpurposely sets his mood so chill to prevent his bomb from going off. But as the song goes on, he gets more and more noticeably tempered. You can even see the point where Witty takes over the song. At first he follows Boyfriend, but as the song picks up, he interrupts the segment with an extended verse. Unlike the official songs in the game, this song has a story progressively going on as you play. Just using the tune, no words are needed to express what's going on, and it just shows the brilliance of the song. On top of that, it just sounds great and uses Witty's electric guitar voice to great use. There's so much going on in just two minutes of tune. Although I don't understand the obsession with Witty as a character, I will say this song deserves the praise it gets. But enough of sucking this song's dick. It's an amazing song, and this is just the song. Witty's mod has so much going right, so to think that even analyzing one song shows so much speaks to the beauty and attention to make things perfect in this mod. Number 2, South. What could possibly take down Witty's song? Two kids in Halloween costumes, apparently. South's concert feel gives off an amazing party vibe. This song also segmented with personally tough sections, and each time I progress further than I had before, hearing Skid and Pump sing a new verse would rise tension and be a nice calm before the storm and, usually, blue balls. I know this won't happen to everyone because there's so many people better than me and would only need to play the song once to progress, but for me, hearing a new segment of the song after many deaths and getting to rest my fingers for a few seconds to hear what I'm about to have to repeat fills me with excitement and motivation. And despite me playing the song many times, I haven't got sick of it, which shows its quality. And now, for the number one Friday Night Funkin' song, between week one and week seven, including the Witty mod, is... Number one, Roses. Where do I start with this song? Well, first it has that feel of ramping up aggression as the song goes on. It has the segmented design of South with that gratifying feel of getting to hear more of the song after several deaths. It has the competition feel of Fresh, it has the instruments that are always important to the song, it just has everything that I like from other songs bundled into one. On top of that, the song just has so much impact. There's so many times where I feel an oomph and a woe from the song and seeing Senpai's flaws start to shine through, along with the feeling that something bad is gonna happen soon, really makes this feel like a buildup of tension before the final act shown in Thorns. And when the song ends, it feels like all the tension has been built up and is about to burst. I honestly doubt that Week 8 can top off this song, and if it does, I'll honestly be impressed. But now that we've ranked each song, Let's see which week is ranked the best. I will do this by assigning 24 points to the first place song, 23 points for the second, 22 for the third, and so on until the worst song, which will only receive one point. I will then add up each of the week's point total, and then we will know the answer. 
Also, the tutorial will be counted as part of week one since week one and the tutorials share locations and just share a lot in general. And they both released at the same time. So in last place, unsurprisingly, we have week five with only seven points. Every song from this week was in the trash category, so it deserves its ranking. Week five just felt unnecessary and lame. The coolest part about it, no pun intended, was the scrapped lemon demon showing up after being left out of week two for what seems to be the fact that the creator of the game couldn't find the beat map for this song. Honestly though, they should have just re-added him into week two instead of moving him over to week five, but whatever, I don't care. Next in seventh place, we have week four with 25 points, which is a huge step up from week five's seven points. Week 4 is fun, but I agree it wasn't as creative as the other weeks. It deserves its spot. But that doesn't mean the week is bad. It's just not as good as the others. In 6th place, we got Week 7. I don't have much to say about Week 7. Um, it had the old animation thing, which was pretty cool, but it wasn't really a good week song-wise. In fact, I must say that I feel like the future of FNF is probably going to be worse. Uh, I'll probably make a whole video about it, but something about the whole Friday Night Funkin' Kickstarter, something about it seems a little bit eh to me. I feel like, I don't know, I'll make a whole video on it. If you want to watch the video, then subscribe so you can see it when it comes out. Also, make sure to like this video, yada yada yada. Okay, let's continue on. In fifth place, we have week three with 40 points. Such a great week. It is catchy and intimidating, and seeing as it's only 5th place just shows how good the weeks are. If this catchy week isn't close to the top, it obviously gets better. In 4th place we have week 6 with 40 points again, which honestly I thought would get further since I really like this week, and Roses literally has the number 1 spot. But I think that since it only had 1 banger and 2 eh tracks doesn't cut it. But still, if I was judging this by more than the music, week 6 would have a noticeably higher rank. In third place we have week 2 with 43 points, and it's scary to think that despite this song only having tunes, it managed to beat 4 other weeks, and I bet if they added another song into this week, it would have gone even higher. Skid and Pump's music are bops, and I wonder maybe if it's best that they didn't add the Lemon Demon, because it probably would have made it not as perfect as it is currently. In second place, we have Witty's Week. To be honest, it's kind of sad how a mod managed to demolish pretty much every single official week. Also, I was thinking of making Skid and Pump a little bit worse, but they have two perfect songs versus two amazing songs and one crappy one. Woody just has so much packed into one week, and it deserves loads of respect. But I've already spent a lot of the video putting Woody in the spotlight, so let's move on. And if you've been paying attention, it should be clear what is the remaining week. In first place, we have week one. What? Is it because I include the tutorial as one of the songs? Hold on. Nope, still gets first place without the tutorial. Was it a typo, perhaps? Let me do the math again, okay. Uh, 11 plus 18. Nope, still wins. But only one of the songs were in the top category. <sighs> okay, here's what I think happened. Week 2 was amazing, but was missing a song. Week Witty was spectacular, but its second track ranked poorly, but Week 1 never had any hiccups. Although its song selection may not be my favorite, it stays consistently great throughout. Never was there a point in the week where I felt undergiven or dissatisfied, so maybe week one deserves to be the best week. To be honest, when I was calculating the scores, I wasn't expecting week one to shine so much, but I suppose that's that. Anyways, as I said before, if you like this video and would like to help the channel, press that subscribe button and comment your favorite FNF song and why it's your favorite, or judge me for having stupid opinions, I don't really care. Anyways, I'm head out. Friday night yet.